Hello, my name is Aya Bearcat. I'm PharmD candidate class of 2021, and I'll be going over some key points about the drug Rapamil. So what is Rapamil used for and how does this drug work? This drug has many formulation and brand names such as Calon SR, Isoptin SR, Verilan PM, Covera HS. It works by blocking the calcium channels in the heart. It also relaxes blood vessels and decreases the amount of work that heart has to do. Rapamil is used to treat high blood pressure and irregular heartbeats or rhythms. It can also be used to prevent chest pain, also known as angina. Here are some important patient counseling points to consider while taking this medication. Take this drug by mouth, the same time every day as directed by your doctor. You can take it with or without food. Never stop taking this medication abruptly unless instructed by your doctor. Take a missed dose as soon as possible unless it is almost time for your next dose. Do not double up. Do not take this medication with grapefruit juice. A store at room temperature away from light and moisture. Common side effects you might experience with Verapamil include face flushing, headache, nausea, stomach pain, and some swelling. More serious side effects that need to be reported to your doctor immediately include allergic reactions such as swelling of face or tongue, trouble breathing, fast irregular heartbeat, or chest pain, sudden weight gain, swellings of ankles, feet, and hands, low blood pressure, dizziness, feeling of faint, or lightheadedness. Now I'm going to present a little bit more detail about Verapamil. It is the first calcium channel blocker to be FDA approved and has many indications including atrial fibrillation or flutters, hypertension, treatment and prophylaxis of proxismal supraventricular tachycardia, and unstable and variant angina. This medication has also some off-label use including acute MI, claudication, PVD, and mania. Rapamil belongs to class 4 antiarrhythmatic agents. It blocks entry of calcium by binding to L-type calcium channels of cardiomyocytes as well as vascular smooth muscle cells. This low AV conduction and decreased SA node automaticity, leading to decreased heart rate. It also relaxes arterial smooth muscles, leading to vasodilation. However, it is worth noting that verapamil has higher selectivity for heart cardiomyocytes as opposed to smooth muscles, and therefore cause less vasodilation. Some studies have also shown that it can be more effective than the digoxin for controlling ventricular rates in patients with AFib. It can also decrease the afterload Thus, it is effective in decreasing left ventricular hypertrophy. Rapamil can also decrease reinfarction in patients with uncompromised left ventricular function. Oral Rapamil is a racemic mixture with several dosage forms that are not exactly interchangeable. The recommended dose for hypertension using IR formulation is 80 to 120 mg three times a day with a max dose of 480 mg a day. Rapamil has many ER formulation. For example, Covera HS is extended release formulation that uses a unique delivery system known as Core 24 and is given at bedtime that reaches peak concentrations early in the morning. The starting dose is 240 mg at bedtime with a max dose of 480 mg per day. The recommended dose for angina using immediate release form is initially 80 to 120 mg every 8 hours and it may be increased up to 480 mg in divided doses. And if using Covera HS, the initial dose would be 180 mg once daily at bedtime. It may be titrated up to 480 mg at bedtime. Another indication for this medication would be ventricular rate control in chronic AFib. The dose would be 240 to 320 mg in divided doses using IR formulation and 180 to 480 mg a day with ER formulations. No dose adjustment is required in patients with renal impairments. However, because verapamil 
clearance is reduced to 30% of its normal in patients with liver disease, the dose is reduced by about 33% of its initial dose in these populations. Verapamil is absolutely contraindicated in patients with AV block, cardiogenic shock, heart failure, hypotension with systolic blood pressure less than 90, and ventricular tachycardia. This medication should be taken with caution if patient is suffering from bradycardia, acute MI, renal or hepatic failure, GERD, myasthenia gravis, or if breastfeeding. In patients taking verapamil, it is important to monitor heart rate, EKG, blood pressure periodically. If you have further questions, you can refer back to my resources listed in this slide. Thank you.